know that we're competing with dinner, lunch, <laughs> breakfast the next day. <laughs> we want to make this as seamless as possible. So hopefully you're in the right session. Let's start there. <laughs> in the right with the session. So let, let's, let's let you be sure that you're in the right place. What we're going to cover today, uh, of course, we're going to do some introductions here. We'll learn a little bit more about you. And we want to talk about why. We said create a strategic network, but why? Why spend all that energy on that? And then I want to, um, then we're going to share a partnership with one of our local universities where we found that strategic network turned out to be very valuable, very important. And then we're going to have just a little quick activity to know how you're feeling uh, at the end. No, we will. Uh, so that you can create or begin to get the building blocks to create your own strategic uh, network. So with that in mind, I'm Jackie Glee. I am with Dallas County Community College District. We're comprised of seven community colleges that are separately accredited. That in itself should answer why we should have a strategic network. <laughs> okay, that should be the beginning of this presentation and the end. But it's been fun. I mean, we had to learn just based on, as we've been finding out through the conference, data is important to make, to make that case about why we have to do things collaboratively and as partners and as a united front. So with that being said, I also have here uh, our district director for transfer and articulation, which is our department, Greg Williams. And then we have one of our liaisons, so you'll get to see, uh, uh, at least he's here, that could be the superstar, <coughs> Jonathan Moss, who's one of the transfer liaisons on our college campus. So uh, that you have some other questions that he can answer. We certainly want to do that. Michelle? Mm -hmm. okay. so my name is Michelle Hurdle, and I am the Transfer Admissions Coordinator at the University of North Texas at <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit more about UNT Dallas uh, soon. I'm excited. Yay. Well, and it, like I said, it turned out to be a natural partnership. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> prioritized our efforts on our top 10, top 15 universities. I mean, we do have partnerships with private institutions, institutions that are outside the United States. But when you're looking at 75% of your students, pretty much at these top 10 and top 15, then you want to prioritize your work, especially as we, you were hearing in other sessions where staffing is an issue. We're down to a few, three in our office. Well, actually, we have two and a half in our <laughs> office, so we work very hard to make things work. And then Michelle is one, okay, one. So with the partnership, <laughs> so with the partnership, as you can see, it helps us to, to uh, you know, broaden our outreach and our approach. So with that being said, let's look at what we call our working definition of a strategic network. Uh, important that you see that I've uh, uh, underlined or highlighted rather the word integrated system, not set aside, not a new initiative, not a support alongside, but integrated. There should be. Just as we're looking for a seamless experience for the student, it should be a seamless design of that approach so that students from one place to the next see the same, hear the same, and know the same experiences throughout those seven colleges. So integrated system of transfer pathways, programs and practices to facilitate a seamless transfer experience from the community college to the four-year university. Why? Why strategic network? Now, uh, have you all seen this infographic today? It's been in about three or four different sessions. So obviously, this infographic is making the point about transfer. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to put something up cutting edge. Said it in the other two sessions. <laughs> but, but, but we're on the right track. Yeah, exactly. We're on the right track. But as you can see here, uh, uh, only 30 or 40 percent of those students transfer out of that large number that makes that commitment, or as we say, they like to check the box, yes, I'm here to transfer. Only 33% transfer. And then with that being said, we're only saying uh, only 42% go on to get that bachelor's degree. So with that in mind, and, and taking as long as they take, what are some of those things that we needed to consider from this national data that would help us design an approach that would help to close that gap. Uh, another reason for the strategic network, this is statewide. We have a state educational plan, 60 by 30. You can pull that up at the site down here. We have four major goals. 
four overarching goals. And with these four overarching goals, we're talking about completion, we're talking about students are in credentials, we're talking about marketable skills, uh, we're talking about um, in 2030 that 6% of the, uh, of the Texans will, that age from 25 to 34, will have uh, some type of credential. Now how is that gonna happen? It's not just gonna happen. So we've done some bold reform, particularly as it relates to our district in developing uh, what we call pathways. Uh, the other session before uh, made reference to the Texas Pathways Project. Dallas County Community College is a part of that. Uh, also in working with our high schools, that particular partnership, looking at how can we start as early as designing pathways for some of the academies that they've designed to the community college, to the four-year university. No longer dual credit, sporadic course taking, but there's a coherent sequence of courses. So we have several things going on at the same time. Uh, but mainly, from the state's perspective, we need to uh, reduce the excessive credits. Okay? Time to degree should be reduced. Again, like I said, marketable skills and completion. Uh, with that, Dallas County Community College District uh, we are looking at nationally, we're looking at statewide, but what is our district, what are our students saying? So what was conducted was a student survey, a qualitative survey, and from that, it was captured in what was considered the, uh, the intentional, uh, the, uh, the student uh, experience survey. So everything we do, everything we plan, everything we know is about what did that student say? We spent all that time designing systems and designing approaches over the years, but this said a whole lot. You know, it, was, it said things that you knew, but now here it is 2016, 2017, they're still saying the same thing. They're getting together and finding out how can, what do we need to do, what are some best practices, what are some uh, policies that, you know, that probably got in the way from us working together to what can we do. With that in mind, uh, three things need to happen. First, for us to begin to design that approach, we want to look at, well, what are our policies and practices <laughs> that are hindering what we're doing? That, that'll stop you every time. Because it's not that people don't want to do, but what's in place that's hindering us? So what we did was exactly what we did talk about at the conference. It was to draw that data, mine that data, and you know, really look through what is actually happening here? What is the information we can give to people to make a case for, wait a minute, we have some things that we need to consider. One is, where are our students transferring to? What are the majors that they're declaring? And what are the majors that they're graduating in? Okay. So that gives us a place to start at all the seven colleges and how we have a view on this transfer work. It's just one example. Conduct forms with stakeholders. Once a year we have a Student Success Summit, we have a kickoff symposium where we're information gathering from all of our stakeholders throughout the district, whether it's advisors, whether it's faculty, the administrators, and staff, in terms of what is it that we can do differently, or what has been your experience in terms of working with uh, and being informed about transfer. And the same thing, talking with the universities about what are our strategies, our strategies as it relates to our district. And then how, in our partnership with you, can we partner or collaborate to begin to carry out those initiatives? Excuse me. Second thing, then, that gives you what you need to create at least the framework. And this framework is what I was mentioning earlier about. We have liaisons on each of the college, you know, each of our campuses. But remember I told you they're separately accredited, so it's not like we go in things what to do. But if we work collaboratively, with uh, academic advising uh, areas, uh, in terms of e uh, each of the college, each of the colleges having one transfer liaison, then what our office can do is meet with them quarterly. Our office can come out, and partner with them on their transfer initiatives, but also it gives them an opportunity to work with the universities in a unique way because now the universities know who are the direct contacts at those colleges rather than just call anybody an advisor. But this way, we are holding them accountable for at least <coughs> those practices, that data, those policies, coming like Jonathan coming here uh, to these conferences and sharing that transfer information throughout <coughs> academic advising areas. Uh, also, we have, we've just established a transfer advisory group, which is more of the instruction leaders or administrators and 
student success is kind of that broad topic, broad title for what used to be student affairs or academic advising. You know, they're trying to have a, a different take on that. But either way, we have um, administrators who have more influence in helping us to uh, facilitate this work of transfer uh, on the pilot, on each of the campuses. It's not that the liaisons can't do it, but their role has been primary to promote transfer literacy. We needed people when we were talking about, we needed you to facilitate speaking with faculty about putting the fact pattern <coughs> together. We needed some people who understood the language and the importance of, it's important that you get this work done. So we're getting really, really good feedback that's in a new place right now. We have one for each of our campuses. They were recommended by our VP Council, which was good, so we had a stake in uh, other administrators saying they felt like this was important uh, to recommend some people. We also originally had a faculty colloquium. When we first started talking about transfer, we were like, who are we connected with at our colleges? Before we got connected with the liaisons in the way we have now and a transfer advisory group representative, we decided, well, let us have a partnership with, or collaboration with the faculty. Um, so we just asked the VP Council, two things. Just try to get us two, three representatives, one that may know, or think they know everything about transfer and articulation, one that thinks they may know, and one that is clueless from each of the seven <laughs> So at least three representatives. So when we got them in the room, it was then, Again, just open forum for what is your experience? What do you believe transfer uh, uh, is all about? How can this be a benefit to you? Or what are some things we can be doing? For some, they had no clue, and that's fine, but they could hear what others were saying. For those who thought they knew, that helped us look at what are our practices now that are so dated, they think we're still doing those things. So it was really, really, we met once a quarter, and still meet once a quarter with uh, these three groups right here. Without transfer, uh -oh. advisory group, we've met a little bit more often because they're relatively new. Uh, external, again, we have forums where we're sitting down or working with or partnering with our universities. Uh, it may be uh, having them come and uh, speak to our transfer uh, internal groups or it may be just uh, a collaborative meeting or a discussion to try to find out how can we go to the next step on what we need to do. Uh, and this is what the framework would actually look like. We're at the Transfer and Articulation Services Office, that's myself, Bruce and Greg. We work with our seven colleges. There were actually, it's not, they don't award degrees, but we also work with our online college. They need to know. So they have a representative as well that's a liaison. But seven of our colleges are the ones that award degrees. So we work with them through these three entities, these three groups, these three approaches right here about once a quarter. Uh, and we are really concerned with the pathways, the programs, and the practices. So we're consistent in what we communicate. Uh, fast moving work in terms of transfer, they understand that, they understand that we set up a technology, tech, set up technology to help us out so we're not meeting with them all the time. So we have a, a portal where they go in, get the latest information, updates, but also the expectations that you would come to the table as well to help us facilitate transfer. And then from there, we work with the universities, uh, which is what we did in one occasion of setting up um, transfer initiatives and opportunities with this one university based on them knowing what are we <coughs> trying to do, what are our strategies, what are our goals um, for DCCD, and what does that mean to your partnership. So with that in mind, we then build uh, the pipeline, again, using the pathways, the programs, and the practices, and using these particular activities uh, you know, collaboratively with the university to say, our students should not experience anything other than a sem seamless experience, transfer experience based on the relationship we've built with you and knowing these things right here and the relationship we have with you. So with that in mind, Michelle will talk about what UNT University of North Texas, Dallas, as part of their partnership. Again, hello, my name is Michelle Hurdle. I am with the University of North Texas at Dallas. Yes, there is one, okay? So there's the University of North Texas, there's the University of Texas at Dallas, then there's the University of Dallas. <laughs> right. <laughs> and here's the picture. We all share one same color. 
Yay! Just fun. <laughs> so a little bit about UNT Dallas. We actually were founded in 2000 as a uh, satellite campus of the University of North Texas. We became a separate institution in 2010, received separate accreditation in 2014. Um, we have 27 majors, 15 minors, five certification programs, plus a college of law. Okay? <laughs> we also are the fastest growing state university within the state of Texas. Okay? Part of that is because our tuition and fees are $7,850. Wait, there's more. That's for the year. Now, you can actually lock in your tuition at UNT Dallas for $7,650 for up to five years, and that includes transfer students. Message. Yes, ma'am. It's a year or a semester? A year. <laughs> All in <laughs> What about out-of-state students? See, about that. Um, that only applies to in-state students. That's, That's fine. Only. Oh. set forth by the district. They've done so much wonderful research. Gotta love it. They've already mined the data. They have the information. I do it again. We use theirs. Okay? So what we did looking at that, um, we changed the design of our transfer process. Okay, we have a lot of different processes that we use when we're dealing with transfer students. Okay? We're talking admission. We're talking advising. We're talking financial aid. As a transfer admission coordinator, I actually am the person who does all of the unofficial transcript evaluations for my prospective transfer students. Okay? Um, I'm the person that will, I don't like to say nag, but you know, <coughs> constantly remind students to turn in documents. I'll meet them to pick up documents. I'm also a notary. Seriously, I do it all. Okay? So we had to change a couple things so that we could meet the needs of our students. Okay? Now, um, but what do we do? What's the transfer experience? What does, that, what does that really look like? How many of you in here were transfer students yourselves? I don't know. All right, do you remember what it was like when you transferred from the community, if you transferred from a two-year to your four-year institution? Does anybody remember it being easy, seamless? Because I didn't need it. Okay, just, all right? Where did you go? <laughs> I'm actually currently at Sanford. So. Okay, awesome. But for me, it was not that serious, okay? I was that kid, oh, look, something shiny. Let me take that, okay? So my transcript sounds like this from the community college. Okay, it's a book. So, and I know there are other students like that. So that was kind of the mindset that I had when looking at the tra designing the transfer experience that transfer students could really get behind and understand, okay? All right, so a little bit about what we did. Okay, so let's just talk about the numbers first, okay? <coughs> the student population at UNT Dallas, we are 70% transfer, 30% FTIC. Exactly. Okay? 70% transfer, 30% FTIC students, okay? We are definitely a transfer-centric institution, okay? 71% of all of our admitted students for the fall 2016 semester 71% of the admitted all transfer from Dallas County Community College District. 71%, okay? And how do they get there? What do they do? We use guided pathways, articulation agreements, as well as students who were core complete. Basically, with these guided pathways and the articul general articulation agreements, these students came in with, as the students back home call it, their basics, okay? Their core curriculum done, 60 hours. Well, at UNT Dallas, a degree plan is 120 credit hours. You're halfway done, okay? This provides them with a seamless transition into the university. But wait, there's more. This also includes our technical and weapon classes for my students who have an AAS, okay? We have a degree at UNT Dallas called a Bachelor's of Applied Arts and Sciences. Some schools have a Bachelor's of Science, of Applied Science, same concept. We will take up to 36, out, 36 hours of technical or weapon credit. We bring that right on in, in addition to whatever core courses they also have. Message, okay? So, core complete in the state of Texas is a state law. If you are core complete at any public two-year institution, you're core complete at any public four-year institution, okay? This is an amazing 
amazing thing. It really, it, it's amazing because it, it helps our students. The other thing that we have in redesigning this experience, which benefits the two-year institutions, is we have reverse transfer. Because at the end of the day, we completion rates. We want to make sure these students complete what they start. Okay, by coming into UNT Dallas, we're going to transfer all that credit back to the community college so they can receive that associate's degree. Okay, it's good for them and it's great for Dallas County. Right? Yes, it is. Exactly. And then when we have high completion rates, they usually let me in more. <laughs> Just saying. All right, so what does that look like? So what we did, we have transfer information sessions, which are broad category, okay? It's a broad information session. We talk about the admissions process. Then we narrow that down into a simple transformation process that is uh, campus specific at the seven colleges, okay? Then we do a 360 and we have a student success summit where we bring the entire district together to discuss all of this. But we're gonna talk about that a little later. This is my team, it's like a Friday. Uh, the soap opera, right? Here. Quick question. Yes. Yeah. Transformation is that like a transfer information? I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Oh, sorry. Okay. But I like where you're going with this. <laughs> so a little bit about transformation. So it's specific to the seven Dallas County campuses. Um, it is we can group it by meta major, okay, or uh, guided pathway, whichever way you want to do it. Um, it's a specialized admissions presentation, and students receive an application fee waiver. Okay? And here's the adage, if it's free, it's for me. Okay? So remember this, when you're doing, if it's free, it's for me. The application fee waiver, the application fee waiver for us, our application fee is only $40. Okay? So when doing this, just make sure that you don't have anything tied to your admissions uh, application fee. It's not a funding someone's salary, okay? Last year, we had enough students at UNT Dallas to attend one of my transfer information sessions that it was to the tune of $25,000 in application fee. Oops, okay? <laughs> what do you want to do? All right, so then at this event, students also get a chance to, we, we table, and we have a table with student affairs, um, and, and that includes our Veterans Success Center as well as the registrar, that also includes our Veterans Affairs rep. Two different people, don't get them confused. All right, financial aid and the Veterans Success Center, like our vets come in, and we partner with the Veterans Success Center at the community colleges as well, okay? Finally, everyone who attends, who brings us an advising report or an unofficial transcript, will receive an unofficial transcript evaluation, okay? And this, basically, students want to know where they are in the pipeline. How, how, far, how much do I have before I graduate? Okay. Now how does this differ between uh, regular transfer information sessions? Well, our general information sessions are held twice a month, the first Friday of every month and then the third Monday of every month. The first Friday is at 1, the third Monday is at 6. I'm trying to get people in, you know. Alright, twice <laughs> a month in the afternoon and evening session, of course they get a general presentation and application fee waiver. We also do a Saturday event, but that's more along the lines of a preview day. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot. Oops. Okay. So just when you do at UNT Dallas, the student success, oh, the student success summit, and what that basically is is we're closing the gap. So we're bringing this back home and we're putting this all together because this year we invited all of the advisors from the Dallas County Community College District back on, well, onto UNT Dallas's campus and they went through a transfer student orientation as though they were students. So they got to see what happens with their students once they leave, okay? And they went, they went through everything, all of the different sessions, okay? It was kind of funny to watch them go from session to session. They, it, was, it was cute, okay? And you had, so you know, you had 140 academic advisors all on campus, they're gaining insight into the student transition. When you say, okay, you're gonna go to TSI, what does that, what does that actually mean? They got a chance to speak with the TSI coordinator. When you say, okay, you need to go talk to the Veteran Services and Student Affairs, what does that mean? They got a chance to do that, as well as Res Life, you know, also. This transfer new student orientation, when I tell you it was exactly the same, even down to the, 
like the t-shirts, they got the t-shirts, they got their binders, they got, I mean, it was everything that our transfer students go through with maybe one or two extra sessions added. This was an invaluable resource for them because they got to see all of the initiatives that they put in place on the other end. How that worked for <coughs> their students and then what things they can tweak on their campuses to make the process even more amazing, okay? Um, the other thing we do with redesigning our transfer uh, experience is some transfer <coughs> support services, okay? Yes, these students have gone to a community college. They have credits, but they still need our support, okay? It doesn't stop once they transfer. So what we did, we created a transfer support framework. This framework actually goes through pre-transfer, transfer, post-transfer. Post so our pre-transfer is going to be any of our on-campus visits. Um, I'm on campus two days a week, Mondays and Fridays. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm at a community college near you, okay? We do that with transfer students. We do our uh, transfer information sessions, our transformation events. Some community colleges, we have transfer academies where we go and we talk to different schools, talk to these students about transferring to their university. Then transfer, once they are on campus, we have our new student orientation. And our new student orientation is all encompassing because this is, we introduce them to career services. We, everything that they need to be a successful student, we do at our uh, orientation, okay? And finally, post-transfer. We have a lot of different academic resources and academic support for these students because at the end of the day, we all want our students to be successful, okay? So our goal is always matriculation, education, <coughs> graduation. That's our goal. Doesn't matter if you're a two-year, doesn't matter if you're a four-year. Matriculation, get a great education, and then I want to see you where? Graduation, okay? And that's what we do. That's how we were able to make our process a little bit more effective, a little bit more efficient, so that our students are coming through and graduating. Now guys, I want to tell you, because we got separate accreditation in 2014, I promise I'll have graduation rates for you next year. Gotta get a cohort together first, okay? But, it, looking at the number of students that we are bringing in from Dallas County Community College, we're doing something right. Okay. Any questions? Okay. 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 I have a question back to the transformation. Mm -hmm. um, so you said it's a group by a data major. Does that mean you'll have like a day that's like business? Business or uh, humanities. Um, and what, we try, what I try to do anyway, let me back up. When I say one, I really am the only transfer person, okay? Yeah, the only one. So that's seven Dallas County Community Colleges, five Tarrant County Community Colleges, three Navarro campuses, TJC, and a Weatherford, okay? But what I try to do is I'll do, I'll group them by meta majors and then do two or three, two usually, campuses that are close to each other. So one campus, Cedar Valley College and Mountain View College, they're about, the same amount of distance from our campus. So I'll try to do an event on one campus and invite both schools. Okay. How many students do you usually get? Well, it depends on what the major is. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What is meta? So meta major is basically a grouping of uh, majors into one group. Well, I use group already. A grouping of different majors into yeah. one a growth yeah, path, that's a cohort, and it's all different pathways. So you can have uh, finance, accounting, general business. Yeah, major. Yes, ma'am. It's a, it's like a little family reunion for your majors. And you're gonna hear more and more of that. Remember, I mentioned earlier about the Texas Pathways Project. That's the whole concept, meta majors, but people are getting lost on that term. So it's really just a grouping uh, or categorization of, like she said, like uh, plans but it is so common, it is going to be the common language. So that's another thing, you have to be able to get out and educate people. Uh, I heard in an earlier session when people saying articulation agreements versus pathway versus, you have to clarify what all of that means. Articulation agreements to us is a written contract. A pathway is a two to four year coherent sequencing of courses 
Whereas in your state or at your school, that may be totally different. But we have spent a lot of time, and still in some places, spending a lot of time clarifying that. You may not think that means a lot, but when we first got with the faculty below me, they were like, what? what are you talking about? Are you talking about agreement? Are you talking about pathway agreement? Oh, it was, oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it was very real and helped us to understand. That's because we know it, the three of us know it. They didn't know that. They didn't know that. And as an example, I used our transfer information sessions versus transformation. And please don't, don't it, it's transformation, the name came about literally because it's a shortened transfer information session. It wasn't anything real deep, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, that's what it was. Um, but there are different things that you can do on your campuses besides trans, that's just something that I, this is an example that I use. I mean, for example, I've met, I'll meet with students, a group of students. We have a, uh, my students can text. It's a wonderful thing this day and age. They can text. And so we'll, I'll get a group of students. We'll meet at a Starbucks near two schools. I'm all, I'm always down for a Starbucks meeting, okay? I'm not going to buy you Starbucks, but I will meet you. And so we, I'll, I'll get their documents, I'll answer any questions. So it just makes the process more seamless because no, everybody doesn't have the same schedule. So if I can work with the student where they are, and then that's gonna, that's gonna help them be successful, I'm all for it. Yes, ma'am. Can anybody use the word transformation or does it just <laughs> Oh, you <yeah. laughs> I got it. I saw a girl. Ms. Vicky, let me tell you something. Our financial aid is named Scholarship Asher, so anybody can use it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, does anyone have any other questions? Just, just oh, okay, well. Hi, yes sir. Do you, uh, do you require your transfer students to attend orientation or is Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. A transfer information <laughs> session is not, and will never be orientation. It is not the same thing, ever. It's a question I get asked at least six times a day. What was the question? If the transfer information, well, it wasn't a question, but tra the transfer information session and orientation are the same thing. But they're not. No, ma'am. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what about students who are in the associate city at the community college? Um, okay. And then, you know, let's say that their first year of this is taking a few credits, they're not sure if they want to pursue transfer or associates. You know, a lot of community college students are in that state. So do, do they meet with you in the mm -hmm. same orientation? Yes, ma'am. So not, orient, not orientation. Yeah. Transformation. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Those, when I have the undecided students, I'll suggest a uh, individual appointment. But yes, we go over the same thing. We talk and kind of hash things out. Because what, what I've learned, once they come to a transfer information session, that starts a whole new circle of, cycle of questions. So then afterwards, I'll suggest a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm more than happy to have that one-on-one -on -one at a Starbucks near you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your Bachelor of Applied Science. You said you take 30 hours? We take 30. 36. How many? 36. Okay, and, and is that um, depending on the major that they're going into? So if they get a AAS in architectural technology, does that mean those 36 only apply to a related major or for any major? So what happens is the major is actually applied arts and sciences. So that you said architectural science. Well, I did, as an example. Okay, so I just want to make so that architectural science class, seven of those classes, twenty-one of those hours will be considered their occupational specialization. Okay, then we have a thirty-six hour professional uh, development concentration, and then the, the twelve of those hours will go into their third concentration. So it's, it's, it's like a liberal studies. Yes, ma'am. Is that what you're Yes, ma'am. Liberal so. studies, general okay. studies, one of my personal favorite university studies. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then how many students, are, you said 70, 30, but what do those numbers actually mean? We have 3,000 students on our campus. Okay. And so 70% of those are from downstate. 71% no. 70% of those are transfer students, period. 71% of all of our fall 2016 admitted students are from Dallas County. I'm just happy I got the number three. Yes, Do you have residence halls? We will. Yes, it's, they're building it right now. Okay. They're building it right now. Okay. They're real school. <laughs> Let me say this. I thought, I, I thought that was a good question asking about the, the BAAS. 
Um, the questions that come up in conversations, with, especially when you're having forums with uh, faculty or uh, <coughs> university administrators, or not university administrators, the administrators at Dallas County Community College District, people want to know, does it still carry the same stigma that it used to? They want to know what? Does it carry the same stigma that it used to that you don't want to get that degree? But now there's opportunity. There are opportunities that are greatly uh, what uh, enriched by having that BAAS degree. Whereas before, well, during my time, you're probably younger than I am, it was not considered that for that college educated person. It was for somebody who wanted to go into straight into a career technical field workforce. Carpentry is what they did a lot of, and I forgot what the automotive welding. But those are the jobs now that are paying sixty, seventy thousand dollars. So we have to educate people on the value of that BAAS degree. Dallas County Community College has a logistics technology uh, AAS, Associate of Applied Science. UNT Dallas has a logistics and supply chain management degree. Okay. Um, we are at, we've actually been able to transfer in those logistics technology credits and then have their student or then they, once they're our students take logistics <coughs> and supply chain management uh, courses. Logistics and supply chain management is one of the highest growing, the fastest growing fields. Um, it, in where we're positioned, we have a lot of different companies. Amazon Fulfillment Center, we have DART, not the, the big trucking company there. And the demand is very, it, it's, a, it's cra a crazy demand for these graduates, okay? And so you look at this, and yes, they have a BAAS, but they have the skill needed. And they are coming out <coughs> of undergrad making money, a good money. Do you, do you incorporate it in either the transformation or some of the on-campus events, those, um, those organizations that are, that, that are big in the industry? Can you just name one? Are they part of the career fairs? They are part of the career fairs. Um, they are part of, we have um, Club Rush. And so a lot of the different clubs, because we have clubs that are born out of these different majors because of the industries, they will participate in that. Club Rush, Club Rush yes ma'am. It is, it is it's, it's hectic, because all the tables have candy. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> but uh, what more importantly, uh, most important is that, uh, one, our students are educated on those uh, BAAS. Like I said, what do you major in account? Well, they may have picked one of the Associates of Applied Science, not realizing it's not one of the liberal arts degrees, and someone talks to them about a BAAS, well, what, what is that? You mean it's not gonna have this title? You know, so really, having the framework that I talked about earlier is where we can... <laughs> having this framework is really, really important, at least on our end, to really be sure that we're communicating that kind of information, that we're consistent in what we say, we're consistent in the information that's being given out, uh, that our liaisons, our working advisory group is knowledgeable about those policies and practices and programs uh, that we can all communicate. Uh, faculty pull up with them as well because they're interested in, you know, want students to take their courses, they want certain programs to be successful, well, they want all programs to be successful. But you know it starts with their course first. But this is the place for us to be able to do that <coughs> consistently. And we've done quite well in terms of, uh, like I said, quarterly or definitely if it's more, uh, need to be more frequently than that, they've responded. Because the work of transfer is just growing uh, by leaps and bounds. Jonathan, did you want to add anything from the campus level? Jonathan is at one of our campuses as our senior, as a senior academic advisor, but he's also the liaison and has been for the last four or five years. So anything you want to share with him in terms of your experience at the campus level? Well, as far as my experience, uh, I work with you know, a lot of universities. Of course, UT Dallas, Texas Tech, Texas A&M. Um, but just having a go-to person, I think it makes it much easier uh, for students. 
Um, I was a transfer student myself. Um, I didn't really have a horrible experience, but it would have been nice to have had that go to person on campus um, that specifically worked with transfer students. Um, so as far as my experience, um, I say this model has really helped um, to kind of streamline the whole, the whole um, kind of streamline things pretty much. Um, other than that, um, that's pretty much it, but it's been a great experience for me from this, from this end, from this end, but um, as a student, I think um, this has really helped to make things much smoother, make the whole transition from the community college into the university uh, a much smoother, much smoother process. And see, from the district standpoint, we want to be the voice for transfer. So you can call someone on another campus, but we want to to be the primary voice. If you didn't hear from us, you didn't hear it. Um, and it's not that that wasn't the intent before, but as things began to grow, as advising changes, advising now works with dual credit, they're pulling departments together. You know, it's for us to at least inform you and say we will be the voice to communicate anything as it relates to transfer. And we've gotten that respect too. So it's not pushed on them, but it it's through these forms that we're able to do that. And have them participate. It's not just come show up, we're doing a PowerPoint presentation, but we're talking round tables. We're talking about, you know, what are you getting? What kind of, is your experience with the, when those universities come on your campuses? What are some of the things you're doing creatively to share with the other six colleges? And that has helped significantly. You know, like they said, networking is key and it's important. But uh, let me go to the end of here, and then, because I want to leave time for something I <coughs> For transformation sessions, students at the conclusion have an opportunity to fill out our Apply Texas application. So Texas has a common app, uh, Apply Texas, and so students, we give them the opportunity to do that, as well as during some of our transformation events, we give the transfer liaisons at the community college an opportunity to come in and talk about transferring, what, make sure what they have at their particular institution before they get ready to transfer to a UNT Dallas. So we work with the transfer liaisons in the presentation. We also give the students an opportunity to complete the application. And then we waive the application fee because they came. Just make sure that application fee isn't tied to someone's salary. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all Michelle can say. Okay, so in the end, with all of this effort, all of this work creating the strategic networks, coming up with a type of approach, uh, having our goals in mind of, you know, nation, nationally, how do we contribute statewide and through the district, what do we do to improve uh, transfer and the transfer rate? This is our contribution to that with coming up with these approaches and sharing that with others who, like yourself, could design a, a system of approach that will allow you to work with a team of some people. So we're saying here from the bachelor's <laughs> and that just having that connection, that collaborative approach, if we just increase by what is that, 10%, we'll come in more bachelor degrees. And that leads us towards our state goal, uh, which is doable, doable, but it's aggressive, very aggressive. For 2030, you know, you have to have 60%. You know, where are you gonna get those 60% who complete a uh, certificate or, or a degree or a bachelor's degree? Where is that coming from? So we have no choice but to do uh, collaborative work and so far so good. So with that in mind, I just want you to think about, um, just take a few minutes here, it won't take long. Uh, I didn't ask earlier <laughs> to help me, so I'll ask now. How many of you are multi-campus systems like ours? Okay, and the rest of you just single district? You mean play with more districts multiple campus? Yes, okay. yes. So let me ask that again, so it's still just a few? Because that, that is a challenge, but also the single um, districts uh, where you're working with just uh, maybe just a couple of colleges and maybe just the one. I want you to just kind of take a moment and think about uh, particularly the, the multi-campus districts. What are some of the things that you can do? Who are some of the key people that you can begin to pull together uh, to create your strategic network uh, to help you communicate the practices and policies and, uh, uh, of, of transfer? Who, who are those people on a regular basis in which can help you design a better transfer experience for that student? 
One of the things that I don't want to leave out, and everything we do, we do surveys. We get feedback. You know, we take the good with the bad. Uh, but what we get the most of is, I'm glad this is being done. I'm glad some things are changing. I'm glad that you're listening. So let me and let me ask you for those who are multi district, multi campus uh, districts like ours. What are some some thought after seeing this? What are some thoughts about what what you do? <coughs> those six of you who raised your hand. Any thought about some things that you can start out doing? We're a multi district district or multi campus multi -campus. four year school. Okay. Or four year plus. So. Mm -hmm. What we're doing now is starting to look at how can we work together as campuses to make sure that our programs go across all three campuses, but making sure that if a student walks up to a table and it's an Oregon State table, it doesn't matter if it's Cascades or the key campus or if it's the main campus, they're still gonna get the same information. The requirements are still the same. Um, and then making sure that our community college partners are all um, getting that same information as well. Definitely makes a difference. Anyone else? Thank you. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Within your district, how, how much do the campuses align themselves to help with the streamlining process? Like, is uh, English composition called this to have the same course number? As <coughs> you know, Texas has a common course yes. numbering system, and for whatever reason, I haven't memorized. Um, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> but uh, every, across every campus, two years, in, uh, freshman level English, what we call back home English 111. Yeah, there is English 1301, English 2 is uh, 1302. So it's all possible. <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing you can do. <laughs> I feel like that would make students and advisors' lives especially. We have some districts that don't follow. Yeah, I don't say that. Mm -hmm. From a four year perspective, I think um, some of the most strategic networking that we have done is developing those relationships with our academic departments so that when they're making a change in their curriculum, they'll call and say, we're thinking about changing this biology. How will this impact transfer students? Absolutely. So that is to be able to build those relationships on campus. <laughs> so if they make any changes to the curriculum, they're thinking about the transfer students. So I think that for us has been the most strategic. And that's been helpful for us to work with. Uh, at the district level, there's a uh, academic, or there's a curriculum uh, director and then there's an a, a associate vice a chancellor with career and technical programs. And they've been at the table with us to help with, you know, developing these approaches, these framework, uh, so that we can be successful in what we do. But also, they're knowledgeable and can pour into us. These are some things you need to think about. Or when you're communicating with your liaisons, your advisory group, these are some things that they need to know. But they've taken ownership for the final product being correct and accurate. It's just that, like he said, the other streamlined pieces, as long as everybody knows you're doing the same thing, your faculty, you're up there talking to the university, are you getting this information? Are you laying out that coherent sequence, knowing the Texas and what they require? Is it in the ACGM, which is the manual for academic courses and all those other things? So they're expecting us to do our part. So we've got to be consistent in what we communicate. So when it gets to the table with them, they're we're good to go. So, and like I said, these partnerships, these collaborative approaches have really, really worked well. You know, beyond the dollars and cents, people are saying, we've been wanting to work together. <coughs> Instead of um, the same thing, um, we have everybody that writes in the department. Oh, okay. So those advisors at different campuses, they talk to each other frequently. Mm -hmm. They also connect with the discipline advisor at the Cody University. So there is a pipeline um, that students are easily referred to. And then the Cody University advisors make it a point to come to at least one campus so students are not even setting out a day-to-day -day applications uh, process. So they're sort of Ahead of the game, um, in terms of, you know, they have, they, they are admitted, so they can start focusing on the transfer process and, uh, um, so they have both sets of advisors ahead of that. I think that's the, uh, it, 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 it,
uh, liaisons on each of the campuses. They know about who the transfer advisory group, working uh, advisory group member uh, is. And that, that helps too because it lets them know it's not this separation of we're all trying to work together <laughs> to be successful with the, with the student uh, in terms of the seamless transfer. We don't leave the student out. We host a transfer uh, fair and a, an entire week really for their benefit for the universities to come throughout the week and go to each of those seven colleges. Uh, also, we have an opportunity to meet with the university so that they can hear, you know, what's up and coming, what is it that when you go out and communicate with our students you need to know, and change your strategy. The focus may be on uh, BAAS degrees. Well, when you're doing the transfer fairs the rest of the week, you may want to have the right materials there, okay? Or bring someone from career services with you or bring someone from your student organizations. We don't want to say just the admissions person. Who can be most impactful to the students? You've spoken with those transfer liaisons at, at, the, at our individual campuses, so you know those populations. Or, and you all can work out something creative for that population. So that has really, really worked out well. People feel like uh, they have a voice at the table, but don't, most importantly, don't leave your student out. That's the, more than anything. We're designing it, but if you're not sitting down with that student and saying, okay, we tried this, this is what we executed, what do you think? And you're not getting that feedback, that's a waste of effort. Waste well, of effort. One of the things we allow <laughs> and encourage is concurrent enrollment. Um, so if you still have, the student still has some classes that they can take at the community college while they're at <coughs> UNC Dallas, as long as you're taking six, or six hours, two classes at UNC Dallas, you can take up to two classes at the community college. Okay? And so that helps them because we may not have something that's offered at the time they want. This gives them another opportunity to get the class while remaining in the um, university. And the cool thing about the current enrollment is that our the UNC Dallas Financial Aid will pay for those classes at the community college. So I mean, some of the things that we've done aren't like in new, we just found a new way to use it to help students succeed and to get where they're going. At the end of the day, like I said before, student success, graduation. Now remember, matriculation, education, graduation, but that's only going to happen with our dedication. I'm going to break that down. That was good. Okay, but that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the missing piece. That's the component. That's what brings it all together. Because if we don't do what we do on a daily basis, they're not going to get to where they need to go, where they want to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. I'll take one more question here, but I want to remind you of some resources available to you, but you've heard about them here. That's why I said we're on the same page. The transfer playbook, oh my goodness. Please go on that link and read that. That, that, that is what we're doing at Dallas County Community College. That's probably the <coughs> movement throughout the, the nation here. And it's, it's what you already know. It's just packaged differently, but the scope, uh, uh, the broader initiative on it is, it, it's just much more serious at this point. We've got to make sure these, these students are educated. This is in the last page of your handout, and also, you know, this is how you can reach us. But go ahead, don't forget to fill out the survey, please. Yes, ma'am. Do you think that Texas has a great, sincere, Effort to educate their students and to get them pushed through. Yes. I do too. Yes, and I believe we have we have a new chancellor. He's been there about two or three years, Dr. Uh, Delman. When I tell you he's at the state level uh, pushing the interest of students and, of course, DCCC, the Dallas County Community College District, but also he's been, been connected at the national level as well. And when they go down to the legislature, regardless of what's being said or done, they know he's been there and he's presented that student's story. And he has students with him all the time. So the story is being told. That was spoken early in a couple of these sessions. We've got to tell the story. We've right. got to tell the story. So that's all we have. Please fill out your surveys. We'll be available right after. We'll be available. And thank you so very much. Thank you.